This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com <clears throat> Okay, good morning everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Bruchem Abayim. We have a special share today um, on the Parsha. And the Shirim of Choy Shvad are sponsored by the Israeli family of Great Neck, Le'iloi Nishmas, Meir Ben David, Hashem Meshav and Aliyah, Be'yamel Tzioshev for his whole family, Arbi Asko El Tzedek. This is uh, a little bit unusual, um, but we have quite an extensive shir today on Parshas Mishpatim. And the opening comments of the Zayar HaKadosh in Parshas Mishpatim are quite enigmatic. Pasach Reb Shimon Va'amar. Reb Shimon opened and he said in his discussion regarding Parshas Mishpatim, these are the stat, the laws that you should place before them. Targum dinaya The targum of it is these are the laws that you should arrange before them. Says the Zaya, that means Elaine Inun Sidurin Dilgilgula. These are the arrangements of the concept of Gilgal Dinin Dinishmasan. The law of the soul. That each person is judged to receive his punishment. The Zoyar sees in the opening Pasuk of Parshas Mishpatim a reference to the concept of Gilgal. <clears throat> what does Gilgal have to do with Mishpatim? Not only is Gilgal not found in Shas, it's not found in the Chumash, and it's certainly not found in Mishpatim. Why does the Zayar see that the Parsha of Elam Mishpatim is a remez to the concept of Gilgal? What's uh, quite remarkable is that there's a gematria offered by Rabbi Yaakov Abi <clears throat> the, the grandfather of the Baba Sali. He says, the word Hamishpatim is the Gematria Guf Nishama. The Gematria, the word Hamishpatim 484, is body and soul. Perhaps then we could say that if uh, Hamishpatim is Gematria Guf Nishama, then while on the open meaning of the Psukim, it's talking about the Mishpatim of the Guf, Ayin Ba'ayin, Shein B'Shein, Regel Baragel. But behind the scenes, certainly it is also referencing the Mishpatim of the Neshama. And the, the Mishpatim of the Neshama is part of the Oynesh and part of the repercussion. And that is accomplished sometimes through the concept of Gilgal. I believe the comments of the Pelayoyets will give us more of an insight of the connection between Mishpatim and the concept of Gilgal. Uh, the Peleoyetz writes in his entry on the word Gilgal, he says, Through the belief in the concept of Gilgal, A person will see that the laws of God, the justice system of God is true. The rock, perfect are his ways. All of his ways are justice. He will not complain against the Midois of Hashem like many foolish people do. When they encounter difficulties, they open their mouth. Why did God do this? What did I do wrong? Am I the most sinful person in the world? And basically, a person could look around the world, and sometimes, to their limited purview, there seems like a lack of uh, justice in the world. They see a lot of injustice, and they question, this person seems righteous, that person seems wicked, why is that wicked person prosper? Why does that righteous person suffer? Says the Velu chachmu yaskilu ki atzur tamim pa'alai v'chol derachav mishpat kel emunah v'yeinav al tzadik v'yashar if they would only be wise. And recognize the wholesomeness of the judgment of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Noisein leish kedracha v'chafri ma'alala v'loy niskenu aliloys. 
Vim Megilgal Zezach V'yashar Pa'alai even if in this time around you acted properly, but maybe these troubles that a person faced is for actions committed in previous uh, rounds. Like the Mikubalim reveals, the suffering of Yoiv was not for what he did. In that round, in that round, he was perfect. But Eoiv was Terach Avi Avram, Avi Noel Vashalim. Or Vagam Bazei Yishlosh of Ladasa Yisurim Koshim Shasayvul Miladim Katanim Atike Mishadayin Gemulim Mecholav. Sometimes a person sees children suffer, babies suffer, Misas Katanim. Why would that be? She'al chatois ne'urim she'lech ha'kadosh baruch hu kitei l'adishu neshama sh'chavas misa l'ksakin asar sh'ivsu. Sometimes God will send a person back to this world to receive some kind of tikkun and they're only here for a short amount of time. V'agav yimtsu avimah k'dei gulasam b'tzarim sh'yitzar v'misa asai and the parents get a certain degree of tikkun through the tzad that they experienced. Sometimes a person sees <coughs> anomalies or with Shiduchim. Ruvain marries Sprinza. What? How did that come about? Where did, they, where, where did these two people ever get together from? Why did this Shiduch happen, not happen? Why did this spouse live, that one not live? Nobody knows the background story. You know, the mushal they give is you go into a shul. And you see this guy gets Shlishi, that guy gets Ravi, the next guy gets Chamishi. And you wonder, what about the rabbi? What about this Gadol Adar? What about... Because you weren't in the show last week. Last week, the rabbi got Asar Sadibrais. So the next week, this guy who you think shouldn't get covered, he, he, this is his first time he got an Ali in 17 years. You just walked into the scene, the Shabbos. So you have a Kasha. Why this guy gets Shlishi, that guy got Shishi? If you would have been around... For the, you know, the last uh, three years of Shabbosim, you would understand the, uh, who got which Aliyah. So sometimes people have questions. Why is this person successful? Why does this person suffer? <laughs> if you've been around the world since the beginning of time and you know exactly who's who and which Neshama is which, then you'd understand things. But it's all Hakomi Pillois Tamim Deim, Bemida Bemishkol of Masura. Everything is precise. When you look in the books of the Mekubalim that talks about the concept of the Golgulim, Be'en of Yirel, Lavava, Yavin, V'yoymar, Ma, Rabu, Masach, Hashem. If a person would have the background knowledge, they would say, How great are God's actions. Uman, Nefloi, Sahavas, Alano, How great He loves us. Asher, Chashav, Machshava, Yisavot, Yidach, Yimeno, Nidach. Everything God orchestrates is so that everyone ultimately has their proper tikkun. So I believe we could say, Like the Abir Yaakov says, Hamishpatim, Gamatria, Gufu Neshama. The Mishpatim is referring not only to the Mishpatim of the Guf, but the, the Mishpatim of the Neshama as well. And therefore, the Zayar HaKadosh opens up this week's parsha that while on the outside and the literal interpretation of the Psukim refer to the Mishpatim of the Guf, but it's also a reference to the Mishpatim of the Neshama. And through the process of Gilgulim, like the Peleyoyet says, we understand Mishpite Hashem Emes. We understand that Yesh Din V'yesh Dayin. We understand there's a very precise system in this world. And all the questions we have are almost, and are, really meaningless because we have such a limited purview. Next, Next approach, why the Zayar introduces the concept of Gilgulim, Dafka, and this week's parasha, Parshas Mishpatim. We all know that we are now completing a segment of the year. Even though between Hanukkah and Purim, it's the winter, it's cold, and we're absent of Yom Tif, and you look on the calendar, it's sort of empty. No. There is a significant period during this time of the year known as Shoivivim. 
Shoivavim stands for Shmois Va'era Boy Bishalach Yisrael Mishpatim. And this time of the year is dedicated to working in the area of Kedusha, of guarding one's eyes, and being Misakin, the Pagam Habris. The Ber Hetev brings down from the Arizal in Simon Tafresh Pehe. He says, Yesh Noyagin Bishanamu Uberas. You know, the concept of shoivivim is even more important in a Ibriyar. Some are noyeg, likbaya tanis b'chol yom chamisha mi parsha shoivivim, to fast every Thursday of shoivivim. Ve'yei shoivivim, some say, and the Berhetev brings tat, truman tetzava as well. Ve'yei shoivivim, gam parsha zvayaka pekudai. And they say, shoivivim Yisrael. And the Yishayach Tzibur says, Aninu in Shachas and Mincha. So you say, well, why this time of the year? What does this time of the year got to do with anything? Because of Arizal B'Ferish HaTorah, Sheyamim Elu Mesugolim L'Saken Avoyin Keri Yosem Mikol Hashana. This time of the year is most predisposed to rectify the sin of Keri, of Tuma more than any time of the year. To those who fast. Therefore, beginning with Parshas Shemais. Now, what does Parshas Shemais got to do with anything? Because that's when the Shibud began. And the Shibud Mitzrayim was a Tikkun for Adam Arishain. Now, what did Adam Arishain do? Wrong. Well, not after Adam Arishain ate from the Yetz Hadas, he separated from Chava for 130 years. During that time, Chazal say he was Moitzi, Shedin, Lilin. Somehow he emitted this carry that developed into certain koiches atuma, and the dar the shibud mitzrayim was a tikkun for that. So since these weeks, shemayis va'ira boy b'shalach yisrael mishpatim was a tikkun for the avoyin carry of Adam Arishain, Therefore, this time of the year is predisposed for such a thing, and it concludes this week, namely kisikne eved every. Now, what does kisikne eved every got to do with anything? By the way, the Chida quotes Arizal. He says, The Iker Tikkun of Shoivivim, of Shmois Vaira, Bay Bishach Yisrael Mishpatim, is for an Ibriyar. And therefore, all you weak, weaklings out there that can't fast every year for six weeks straight, at least this year you should fast for six weeks. And if you haven't yet fasted for six weeks straight, today's your last day. So I recommend, at least during the Shir, don't eat. And... Maybe that will be worth something. But anyway, let's try to get a little bit of a glimpse into why exactly this, these six weeks are the six weeks of Shoivivim, are a tikkun for the Chet of Adam Arishain, and perhaps this will give us a, an additional insight into why the Zayar HaKadosh introduces the concept of Gogulim specifically for Parshas Meshpatim. Says the Arizal Nashar Ruach HaKodesh. He says the concept of Shoivivim is well known. There's an early custom in Klal Yisrael to fast 40 consecutive days from the first day of Parshas Shemois until Parshas Chuma, and a little bit of Tetzaveh. And here's the Remez. Shuvu Banim Shoivavim Rashi Tevois Shemois Vaera Boy B'Shalach Yisrael Mishpatim. Now the Iker fasting is during the day, and it was during the day. Is for the Avoin of Keri. And these days are Mesugal to fast for Keri more than the entire year. And the reason for this is we've explained regarding Golos Mitzrayim that we were punished Bechoimer Uvilvenim. Now, what does that got to do with it? Bechoimer Uvilvenim? Where do we find the expression Bechoimer Uvilvenim? We find it by the Dar Haflaga. Vayihi hachemar lechoimer. And they, they made levenim. And basically, how is Shibud Mitzrayim a tikkun for the sin of Adam Arishain? Because those who were enslaved in Mitzrayim were those sparks of Neshamais that came out of Adam Arishain in those 130 years that he separated from his wife. That Adam Arishain, the Gemara Nervin says, was moiled, shaden, ruchin, do Tipois carry. And all of this was Niskan and Golas Mitzrayim. 
And therefore, at the time of these parashiyos, this time of the year, it's a segula to makabel, the tshuva of man, now of Adam. Now, this is a very important concept. In other words, if we're reading parashiyos shemois now, this is a very important concept in Judaism. We don't just read something and therefore it's ancient history. As we're reading something that occurred, that it's a living Torah and it, it affects the Zman. So just like Sheba and Mitzrayim was a tikkun for the Chet of Keri, every year that we read about Sheba and Mitzrayim, that Kayach is reawakened. Therefore we start Parsha Shemais, because that was the beginning of the Sheba, and it ends in Parsha's Mishpatim. Now, what does Mishpatim got to do with it? I can understand Shemais. But Va'era Bay Bishalach, that's already the Geula. And Yisroi, what does Yisroi got to do with the Tikkun for Adam Arishai? And Mishpatim, what does that got to do with it? Well, it continues until the Parsha of Matan Torah and Kisikna Evadivri. And the Arizal says, you know, I'll tell you about that some other time. So now we got to search through the Kisve Ari. Where does he tell us about this? So he writes about it in a sefer called Shar HaPsukim. And here's the basic idea. The basic idea is Adam Arisho needed Tikkun. So he came back a couple of times. First Adam Arishon came back as a Dar HaFlaga. And they made things worse. Vayered Hashem Lerois. <laughs> he's at Adam, he's at it again. Then he came back again in the Dar HaMabal. And now, to add insult to injury, the main chid of the Dar HaMabal was their Mashch Zera. So God says, Vayarshem ki Rabba Ras Ha'adam! Adam, he's at it again! Not only are they not, is he not rectifying, he's sinning more. How do we know that he was, the Dar HaMabu was Mashch Zera? It says, Ki Rabaros HaOdam. And Ra refers to Hashchot Zera, like it says, Vayhi Er Bechor Yehuda Ra Be'inei Hashem. And in Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim was a Tikkun for the Chet of Adam and the Dar HaMabu and the Dar HaFlaga. So for the Dar HaMabu, the Tikkun was through Kol HaBen HaYiloid HaYoyro Tashlichu. They were drowned again. And for the Dar HaFlaga, who made Choy Chaymer, by Mars Chayem, by Choymer Uvalvainim, that was a, a tikkun for the HaFlaga. But still, what does Yisrael got to do with it? What does Mishpatim have to do with it? Let's take a look at this. It says that Arizal, the beginning of the Gilgal process began by the Dar HaMabal, and because they came from a bitter source, that they came from the Hashchat Zazar of Adam Arishain, therefore they were Kaifer Be'ikar. And their main sin in the Dara Mabal was Hashchat Zara. How do I know? It says, Ki Hishchiz Kalbasar. And that's what it means. God re- was, had second thoughts that he made Adam. Adam, the, the reference to Adam is that they are on the Bechina of Adam Arishain. This is what it means, Vayar Hashem Ki Rabba Ras HaAdam. As we know, Hashchaz Zara is called Ra. Like it says, Vayhi Er Bechor Yehuda Ra Be'inei Hashem. So, says the Ari, that the generation of the Mabel, that they left, that they came out because of Hashchaz Zara of Adam, they're called Ra'as HaAdam. That's why God says about the Dar Malayim Hashem Ches HaAdam Asher Barasi. That they are the Bechina of the Neshamois of Hashchas Azar of Adam Arishain. And Adam Arishain was Yitzir Kapov, therefore by the Dara Mabu it says, V'chol Yitzir Machshavais Libai. And that's why they had such bad inclination. And in exchange for that hot droplet, that all the mission was mashchas, they were punished in mayim roischem. Then says Zari, they came back for another round, the dar haflaga, and they also sinned, but this time not hashchaz zara, like the pasuk says, vayered Hashem l'roi says so irvis hamigos shem banu bnei adam. 
And the Zayar says, B'nai Adam Amish, Adam Arishain. Then they came out a third time. The Anshe Sedoim. That's why it says, Anshe Sedoim, Anshe Sedoim, Royim V'chatoim, Royim, because you're a Mashcha Zara again. Now, I'm going to tell you, says Rebchaim Yitav, what I remember hearing from the Ari. Adam Arishan violated the seven mitzvahs that he was commanded. One of them was, he stole. He was commanded not to eat from the Eitz Hadas, and he ate it begezel. He was also Mashcha Zaroi. Therefore, in the Dara Mabal, they were Mashcha Zaroi. And that's on the Dar Mabul Loi Nechtam Gzardin Me'alala Gazel because they're following the way of Adam Arishan. What else did Adam Arishan do wrong? We find that he was Kafar Be'ikr. That's what the Dar Haflaga did wrong. They built the Migdal, they were Kafar Be'ikr. They wanted to go up to the Shamayim to fight at Kadesh Baruch Hu. We find Adam Arishan sinned Bedinim. Therefore, in the Anshe Sedoim, they were corrupt in Dinim. So basically, they committed four atrocities following in the way of Adam Marishan. Gezela, Hashchaz Azera, Kafar Be'ikr, Dinim. So now we know that they committed these sins. Let's try to figure out how are these sins rectified. And with this we'll answer another question. You know, we know that God was going to give us the Torah in Har Sinai, and yet before Har Sinai He gave us certain mitzvahs. Number one, at Mara, he gave a Shabbos, Dinim, and B'Shalach, appointing Dayanim in Yisroi, Biata Sechaza. Number three, in Mishpatim, all the Dinim that were said before Matan Torah, because afterwards it says, V'yal Moshe Amar, Alei Al Hashem. And the answer says, Ari, all the mitzvahs that we were commanded before the Torah was actually given was a tikkun for Adam Arishain, and in turn a tikkun for the Dar HaMabal, who were Mashchis Zera, and the Dar HaFlago, who were Kafar Be'ikr, and the Anshe Sedoim, who were a corrupt in Dinim, and the Dar HaMabal, who did Gezela. And therefore, even though we were purged and cleansed in the crucible of Mitzrayim, but we had to go back now and bekum va'asei fulfill specific mitzvahs before the Torah was given. So the Dar HaFlaga, they were kaifer be'ikr and they served Avodah Zarah. They were given Shabbos because Shabbos is a tikkun for Avodah Zarah. As it says, Ashrei Enosh Yaseh Zois, Shomer Shabbos Mechaloloi. If anyone's Mekayim Shabbos, they're Moichlin Lai Akal Avonois of even on Avodah Zarah. That someone who is koifer in Shabbos is like koifer kala tarakula. Anyone who is moideh in Shabbos is like mekayim the whole Torah. So through Shabbos we were mesake in the Avera of the Dar HaFlaga. They were koifer be'ikar. And the Dar HaMabal who stole. So God gave us parshas mishpatim. The whole mishpatim is about gezela, geneva. What do you do if you steal? And even the din that an Eved, of Eved Ivri selling himself, why is he selling himself? A tikkun for Geneva. So to Masaki and the Dor HaMabu were given Parshas Mishpatim. And by the way, Klal Yisrael being sold as Avodim to Mitzrayim was a tikkun for the Gezela of Adam Arish and Dor HaMabu. And what about being Moitzi Zer Levatola? That's when the, the babies were thrown into the river, Benizbaru Minara. And what about the Avera of Anshe Sedoim? They were corrupt in Dinim, and therefore in Parshas Yisra, Yisra comes to Moshe and says, Moshe, we gotta, we gotta fix this whole thing up. Yata Secha Zemi Kolaam. Marvara Boisai, the entire Sefer Shemois is a tikkun for Adam Arishan and the four Gilgulim that he endured. Number one, Dar Haflaga. Number two, num- Dar Amabel. Number three, Anshe Sedoim. And then finally, in Mitzrayim. And Adam Arishan was corrupt in four areas. He stole, that was Niskan in Yeridol and Mitzrayim. That was Niskan in the Dinim of Gezel and Parshish Mishpatim. That is Niskan 
in Kisikne Eved Ivri. On the Rishon was Kafar Be'ikr, we were given Shabbos and Mara. On the Marishain was Moitzi Zerl of Atala, that was Niskan in Kol Haben Hayilad Hayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
And therefore, it is all of our responsibility to do what we can to elevate ourselves in this area. And then we'll be zoicha also to all the brachos of Kabbalah Satayra, Be'ezos Hashem, with the conclusion of Shoivivim, Shemois Va'era, Bo'i B'Shalach, Yisroi, and Mishpatim. Okay, we're going to now start the Shiran Tfilah. Yeah. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.